Architects can't usually design buildings simply for themselves. They have to bow to the wishes of their clients. But that wasn't the case at Pittshanger Manor. John Soane didn't have to answer to anyone. It was his project with his money. And it's a wonderful chance for a great architect to be himself. I've lived in Ealing for more than 40 years. and I've known this park and the manor house for all that time. I remember when it was a library and I was invited the day before the restoration project to see what was going to happen. And now I've been invited back to see what the result is. I can't wait. You might think the obvious entrance should be where the old main entrance was. But when Soane was developing this site, he didn't want to do anything as obvious as that. No, he wanted his entrance to be in the corner. And why was that? Well, so that you would come along here and you would then see the house in the best possible light. This is interesting. These two buildings were joined by what was called a Victorian infill. So this was a Victorian block that was just hammered in here. And frankly, it looked pretty awful. They've removed the whole thing in order that you can see that wonderful, wonderful facade. Terrific. terrific. This is the wonderful entrance. And what John Soane was worried about was how would he greet people who arrived in their carriages here? Well, he wanted to make sure that when he came out of the door, he was on the same level as the people in the carriage. He thought of everything. Oh, this is, this is good, this is very good. They've done this so well. This is the entrance hall. And this is very, very much so with this, like a lantern up here and the light coming in. He was a master at that. This is the breakfast room. Oh, this is magnificent. All you see with Soane, if you just think of one thing, you think of these curves and the arches, and it makes the ceilings look so interesting. And if you go through another wonderful room here, come, come along, come this way, through here, look at this. You see again the ceiling, and it's, uh, it's what he did in so many different places, including the dining room at number 10 Downing Street. The light. He was a master at this. It's, uh, it's so exciting to see it and to have it, well, look so clean and good. When I came here last, it wasn't like this, it was dusty. And it was, it, you really did feel it was an old house. And now you can see, well, the excitement of it. The upper drawing room. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yes. Glorious, a glorious room. And you can imagine the people coming here that he wanted to impress. But it wasn't just the famous people in London that he wants to impress. The people he really, really wants to impress were his two sons, because he was hoping that they would be so inspired by this house that they themselves would want to become architects. But they didn't. One of his sons predeceased him, and the other, amazingly, wrote an attack on his father and his father's architecture and it was said that Soane's wife died early because of the family rift that opened up. And this is the master bedroom where Soane slept and where he dreamt. But of course the dream of this house designed by this master of light became a place of tragedy of the darkest shadows. The master of light couldn't avoid those.
Thankfully, this building has been saved and restored. Its place in the history of architecture should be assured. But, there's always a but, upkeep and more restoration costs money. You can help. Please do.